Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I'm just going to wait a couple more minutes. Um, I'm still waiting for our secretary to join, and we'll uh, give folks plenty of time to to join the meeting. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to MVO3 for this uh, actually fairly short meeting. We've got a uh, fairly short agenda for IETF 110. Uh, my name is Matthew Bocci. I'm here with my co chair, Sam, uh, and we also have our secretary, Iju, uh, who I think is going to take the minutes. Thank you. Okay, so this is the, the notes well. Um, I'm sure you are all very familiar with this by now. Um, this basically says any anything you say uh, within this, the, the frame of this IETF is uh, considered to be a contribution to the IETF. I'll just leave that up on on the on the screen for a few seconds. And so, any IETF policies related to that um, apply. Okay, uh, blue sheets are done automatically, which is great. And Izu is taking our minutes, thank you. So as I mentioned, we have a very short agenda today, uh, just a quick working group status update, and then an update on the uh, draft for BFD for Geneva. Any comments on the agenda? Okay. Right, uh, milestones. So, um, is, as usual, need an update. Um, many of these are completely out of date, uh, and but there are possibly one missing, which is we don't have a milestone for our Yang model. Um, so we probably ought to ought to add one for the Yang models. Um, in terms of completion of the working group's charter, or completion of as much as we can do in the working group's charter and on our milestones. Um, now, currently, we have um, some OEM drafts uh, in progress. Uh, we have a data plane encapsulation, which has been published. We have a whole set of other RFCs related to the framework and architecture of MVO3 that have been published. And we have some young models in progress. Um, 
is there anything else i guess the question is that we're, at some point we need a discussion on whether that is complete for the from the perspective of the working group and if there's anything else that we need to do before wrapping up the working group that will be valuable to the community um any comments on that so i, I think the the approach should probably be that uh, sam and i will will update the, the milestones um and probably put a proposal to the list of what we believe needs to be completed uh before we can say that the working group is is done so <clears throat> this is sam speaking as individual contributor so we have uh, two drafts one is bft and another one is the oem pollution uh, where are we with uh, the, the OEM solution? Are we planning to go forward with that? Uh, we have draft authors here, so. Greg. Yes, thank you. Um, good question and thank you for bringing it up. Um, I think that uh, the OEM draft is, um, don't was adopted last year but it's a stable and um i would ask a working group to consider adoption poll or something like early review um definitely adoption poll will produce the comments and then we can address the comments and uh we'll um we're committed to work on them uh, right away so I think it's uh, uh, reasonable to expect that we'll have it um, complete by next um, meeting. So if, um, for example, um, adoption poll, will, uh, not adoption poll, so last call, I'm, I apologize. Last call uh, issued, then uh, comments will come and we'll uh, address them by next meeting. So, so we have mechanisms as well to to get wider IETF review, um, such as a uh, routing area review uh, for, that, that, for that, the draft, that, which I think would be worth doing. That, that's a, that's a great idea. So, ask uh, routing directorate for early review. Yeah. Okay. And as I said, we are committed to work. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Document status. Um, so we have one new RFC since the last uh, last time we met as a working group in the IETF. That's RFC 8296, which is Geneva. So that's our first standards track RFC um, for the generic uh, network virtualization encapsulation. So congratulations to the authors and thank you for your hard work on addressing the, the fairly lengthy and detailed set of, of, of comments for that. Um, we also have a encapsulation draft, draft ITF MVO3 NCAP, uh, that kind of, I think that was the one that describes the output of the, the encapsulation design team. Uh, we did try and try and last call that last year, didn't get a lot of responses on the list. Um, we did at some point promise that that was be that we would try to publish that document um and we felt that as a working group it was valuable um at the time to to, to publish it as really as a way of documenting um documenting the experience of one working group in picking uh, an encapsulation uh when there were multiple candidates on the table um but obviously we can't move forward without sufficient review uh, from the working group and consensus that this is actually something that the community is interested in. So I think probably the way forward with this is to run another working group last call, but we would obviously like to see um, much better buy-in from the working group uh, on um, on progressing with this. The I think the editors have also uh, not been so, um, so active on this as well. Um, so... Yes, we definitely need a, an active an active editor or two on this draft um, if it's going to move forward. 
We also have um, some informational documents on alternative encapsulations. Um, I think that the one that um, had interest in progressing last time we discussed this was for the Exelon GPE. Um, and so uh, we probably need to work in group last call that as well. But again, I think we're going to be we're going to have to look for fairly significant interest from the working group and some comments and proper level of review from the working group in order to progress this document. Um, the, we have a draft related to the control plane, which is the use, the applicability of VPN to Geneva. Um, we that went through working group last call. It's now with Martin. Um, it is held in his queue waiting for a companion document in the best working group that shows the uh, BGP extensions required for Geneva. Um, that, uh, so really we're, we're kind of waiting on, on the progress of that. Um, the virtual machine mobility document. So that uh, was sent back to the working group after, after review by Martin. Um, there were some comments from Martin about it being not really specific to NVO3. I don't know, if Martin, if you want to say anything more about that at this time. Go ahead, Martin. I think you should be able to. Martin, there's a problem with your audio. Do you hear me? Yes, now we do. Okay. Yes, uh, on that specific document, uh, I think I uh, I had communicated back uh, to the working group my expectations. Uh, I know that. Um, uh, Donald had tried to uh, uh, work a bit, uh, help uh, the authors to uh, rework a bit the document. But still, I, I think there are a number of questions that the, the working group needs to uh, needs to bring an answer to. And uh, what would be great if uh, would be that uh, you, the chairs, help drive that discussion uh, to see where it leads. Okay, thank you. Um, Yang models. Um, so we have a configuration model for NVO3. Um, I believe there's also a Yang model for Geneva as well, which isn't listed on here. Sam, I think you were looking at, at, at shepherding these, these drafts. Do you want to say anything? Yes, uh, that's correct. So I have uh, received email from the authors yesterday. So I will uh, I have uh, two action items for that. The first one is uh, I will have to get review comments uh, from young doctors, and uh, I'll also try to prepare for last issuing the last call. Okay, great. Thank you. And um, we have two OEM-related working group dra drafts. We have um, the BFD Geneva draft that's on the agenda, and we also have the uh, uh, Geneva OEM draft, um, which we just discussed. Okay, so um, first up is BFD for Geneva. Right, I need to change my sharing to do that. Okay, go ahead. Uh, hello. Uh, hello, it's Xiaoming speaking. Yeah, uh, this presentation is on uh, BFD for Geneva. This draft uh, was adopted uh, by this working group in November last year. Uh, I present the 01 version of the working group draft. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the uh, summary of uh, 
main updates from uh, 00 version to 01 version. Uh, the first one is to uh, update uh, the latest uh, status of two uh, most uh, relevant uh, referenced documents. Uh, they are Geneva document and uh, BFD for VXN document. Geneva tunnel encapsulation uh, has been uh, published as RFC uh, 8926, and uh, BFD for VXN has been published as RFC. 8971. And the second main update is to uh, resolve the open issues with BFD over Ethernet over Geneva encapsulation, uh, including uh, number one, uh, if the VAP of the original MVE has no IP address, then what IP address to be used for IPv4 or IPv6? Uh, number two, uh, if the VAP of the terminating MVE has no IP address, then what IP address to be used for IPv4 or IPv6? Uh, the third main update is to clarify the exchange of a BFD discriminator if needed. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, for the BFD for Geneva job, to uh, except uh, for Geneva tunnel encapsulation. Uh, BFD for VXLAN uh, is also uh, one of the most uh, relevant documents, uh, which is now uh, RFC 8971. Uh, considering the similar, uh, similarities between uh, BFD for Geneva and the BFD for VXLAN, uh, the BFD for Geneva document uh, would reuse uh, uh, RFC uh, 8971 uh, as much as possible. Uh, otherwise, uh, there are uh, two main differences between uh, BFD for Geneva and uh, RFC uh, 8971. Uh, number one, uh, BFD for uh, Geneva specifies a uh, non-management VNI solution. Uh, nevertheless, uh, RFC 8971 specifies management VNI uh, solution. Uh, for com uh, completeness, we plan uh, to also uh, include the management VNI solution uh, in this draft uh, by uh, referencing to uh, Geneva OAM working group draft. Uh, that job uh, provides uh, specifics uh, for the requirements on both non-management VNI solution and the uh, management VNI solution, uh, as well as how to achieve management VNI solution uh, in the case of Geneva. Uh, number two, uh, BFD for Geneva use IP over Geneva as well as Ethernet over Geneva. Uh, nevertheless, RFC uh, 8971 use only uh, Ethernet over VXLAN uh, due to uh, VXLAN uh, characteristics. Next slide, please. Uh, as mentioned uh, just now, uh, the 0 M version draft uh, uh, resolves the uh, open issues with uh, BFD over Ethernet over Geneva encapsulation. Uh, this is the open issue one and uh, its resolution. Uh, the open issue is that uh, if the VAP of the originating MVE uh, has no IP address, uh, then what IP address to use for IPv4 or IPv6? Uh, in uh, zero zero version draft, uh, uh, in this scenario, the IP address of the originating MVE uh, is used. Uh, nevertheless, uh, in 01 version draft, uh, uh, in this scenario, the IP address uh, 0 .0 .0 0 .0, uh, 0 for IPv4 or uh, colon colon uh, slash 1 to 8 for IPv6. Uh, should be used. Uh, that's because uh, 
zero dot zero dot zero dot zero for IPv4 or uh, column column slash one to eight for IPv6 uh, is unspecified address. Uh, according to RFC uh, 4291, uh, an IPv6 packet with a source match address of uh, unspecified must never be forwarded by an IPv6 router. So uh, we think that uh, in this scenario, uh, using the unspecified address uh, is more suitable uh, than using the IP address of the originating MAE. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is the open issue two uh, and its resolution. Uh, this open issue is that uh, if the VAP of the terminating MAE has no IP address, then uh, what IP address to use for uh, IPv4 or IPv6? Uh, in zero zero version draft, uh, in this scenario, uh, the IP address uh, must be chosen from the uh, column column ff ff uh, column one two seven dot zero dot zero dot zero slash one o four range for IPv six. Uh, nevertheless, in the uh, in the zero one version draft, in this scenario, the IP address should be uh, set to uh, column column one slash one two eight for IPv6. Uh, that's because uh, column column one uh, slash one two eight for IPv6 uh, is a loopback address. Uh, according to RFC uh, forty two. Uh, 91, an IPv6 packet uh, with a destination address of a loopback must never be sent outside of a single node and must never be forwarded by an IPv6 router. Uh, in this scenario, the used uh, IP address for IPv4 uh, doesn't change. Uh, it should still be uh, selected from the range uh, 127 slash 8. Uh, if there is also a suggestion to change the uh, used IP address for IPv4, uh, please let us know. Next slide, please. So uh, with the open issues and uh, resolutions, uh, why do we need to use uh, BFD over Ethernet over Geneva instead of uh, CFM over Ethernet over Geneva? Uh, I think uh, this is a remaining uh, question. Uh, there are three reasons for the answering this question. Uh, from the authors. Uh, number one, uh, in some uh, scenarios, using one OM protocol uh, is beneficial. Uh, for example, that can uh, reduce the amount of uh, uh, code if we use both uh, BFT over IP over Geneva and uh, CFM over Ethernet over Geneva, then different sets of codes is needed. Uh, number two, uh, the authors uh, assume that the DC operators are unwilling to learn and operate two totally uh, different OAM mechanisms. If they are going to deploy both uh, IP service and Ethernet service in their DC networks. Uh, number three, uh, last but not least, uh, the authors are in favor of BFD. Uh, much more than other OAM mechanism uh, outside IETF, uh, such as uh, CFM, uh, that is uh, defined in IEEE uh, 802.1. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in zero one version draft, uh, 
the third main update is to uh, clarify the exchange of uh, BFD discriminator uh, if needed. Uh, exchange of a BFD discriminator uh, is deemed uh, optional and uh, outside the scope of this job. Uh, firstly, uh, the out of band exchange of BFD discriminator is an uh, optional add on, uh, which is not necessary. Uh, because, as stated in this job, uh, at the receiving side, the BFD control packet uh, can also be demultiplexed uh, with your discriminator equals to zero. Uh, if out of band exchange of BFD discriminator is used, then uh, there are multiple methods that can achieve it. Uh, for example, uh, echo request or reply uh, can be used. Uh, BGP eVPN uh, can be used, and uh, open flow can be used too. Next slide, please. Uh, next steps, uh, we are revising this job to, uh, to resolve further comments, uh, and then uh, ask for uh, working group last call. Mm, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any comments? Okay. Um, I think that's with the, the OEM Geneva draft, it'd be worth getting a, a routing area review of this. Um, I'm wondering if we shouldn't also get a ask for a review from the BFD working group. Um, I appreciate it's the same group of people, <laughs> mostly. Um, but, uh, so I have actually one question, uh, speaking as individual uh, contributor here. So uh, what's the decision about the IP header? Uh, you plan to use local, local host type address, or what exactly was the decision? Uh, sorry, do you mean uh, destination IP address? Yes. Uh, so for which encapsulation? Uh, do you mean the BFT over Ethernet over Geneva? Yes. Uh, destination IP, I, I think uh, for IPv4, we use the, uh, the range. We, we chose the IP address from the uh, range. Why? from uh, 1 to 7 slash 8. Uh, so for IPv6, uh, in this version, in this uh, zero by version, uh, we use the uh, column, column 1 uh, slash 1 to 8 for IPv6. So uh, the uh, destination host or NVE, whichever is processing this BFT, frames uh, needs to open a UDP socket uh, for 127 address, is that right? Yeah, I, I think so. Interesting. Is, is it uh, done similarly for other uh, uh, VXLAN as well, or is it purely for Geneve? Uh, because, uh, as I uh, said, uh, in RFC uh, 89, uh, 71, uh, the BFD for VXN solution is for uh, management uh, VNI. So, uh, right. it's a, yeah, there's uh, some difference. Uh, in this uh, draft, uh, we, uh, provide the, we provide the solution for uh, non-management VNI. So uh, there, there's some uh, difference between these two jobs. Uh, Greg, you can speak. Um, it's a very interesting question. So um, uh, when we uh, discussed uh, BFD over VXLAN, so it was pointed out that um, 
IPv4 um, loopback addresses mapped in IPv6, they don't have a special meaning. So the only loopback uh, IP address that exists in IPv6 is uh, 1 slash 28. So uh, functionally, um, for IPv6, if we use a loopback address range for IPv4 addresses, then in IPv6, we can use only single address 1 slash 128. And that's what recommended in um, Geneva OEM document that uh, IP encapsulated control packets uh, use um, addresses from IPv4 loopback range or uh, 1 slash uh, 128 for IPv6. So in that regard, uh, BFD document and uh, Geneva OEM documents are consistent. I see. So purely for V4, uh, in this case, uh, if you don't have IP on the source and also IP on the destination, so you are planning to use 127 address, uh, is that right? Um, if there is no uh, IP, uh, well, this this goes to um, NBE, so which terminates Geneve. Um, so it doesn't go to the tenant. I, I can imagine the tenant doesn't have uh, IP, but I would imagine that NBE will have IP. Uh, wouldn't that be the case? No, I'm just uh, echoing the, the, the issues at hand. Uh in the slides where you mentioned no IP. So I was a little bit curious. Uh, so NVEs do not have IP, right? So I'm not talking about that. Oh, oh OK, yeah. right. Uh, again, um, that's that's a little bit because basically uh, the premise of this is that it terminates on that WAP because it wants to test as much as possible of um, their infrastructure right so um yeah um again that that's that's the case if um that doesn't have ip then uh i would imagine that ethernet encapsulation will be in place okay anyway i'll take a look at it and uh, if I yeah have thank you uh yeah yes uh, actually, uh, when those solutions for uh, the FFT uh, Geneva, one is for the management VNI, another is for the non management VNI. So, uh, this draft uh, only describes the non management VNI solution. So, for non management VNI, uh, uh, we provide two encapsulations. First is IP over uh, BFD over IP over Geneva. Another is uh, Ethernet, uh, BFD over Ethernet over Geneva. So for the second one, uh, there's a scenario that uh, the uh, web VIP of the uh, originating MAE or the web uh, of the terminating MAE has no IP address. So for, for this uh, specific scenario, uh, we provide resolution. So the op open issue one and open issue two are just for this specific scenario I just mentioned. OK, any other comments? Um, so with that, that was our first and last session presentation. Um, thank you for for joining. Um, please look out for requests on the list for a review of ver the various drafts that we need to complete um, and last call at some point in the near future. And with that, uh, any other 
Any, would anybody like to raise any other issues with the working group? No. Nope. Okay. Well, I think that uh, closes the meeting. Thank you. And uh, hopefully, see you. See you at the next IETF, wherever that might be, online or or somewhere else. Thank you.